let's see what Donald could do. I voted today for Donald Trump. He's the lesser of the, than two evil. I voted for Hillary even though I tend to vote both parties. We need someone that's for us. I, I think Trump's a better candidate on that. Um, and that's, you know, that's where my vote went. Well, I'm voting for Clinton because mm, I'm, I don't know, why would I vote for Trump? <laughs> Well, uh, voices from across America talking about their votes on this Election Day 2016. Welcome back to Newsmax TV's continuing coverage of America Votes 2016. And speaking of votes and results, let's take a very early look at the results from the Sunshine State of Florida. And check this out. Early on, very early, less than 1% of the precincts, but Donald Trump, now with 59% to 30% for Hillary Clinton. There was some conjecture about high voter turnout in what is called Florida's first coast, uh, the area around Jacksonville, about a five county area. Perhaps we're seeing some of these early votes being recorded and a very decisive uh, margin early on for Donald Trump in what is going to be a key race tonight and perhaps a nail biter. We'll continue to keep our eye on the Sunshine State and others, but we'd like you, if you'd care to do this, to let us know who you voted for and to let us know, log on and vote again, if you will, so to speak, at NewsmaxPolls.com. Yes, the presidential election tops the ballot in all 50 states tonight, but there are other races of concern that warrant our attention. And to talk about some of those, let's welcome in our chief Washington correspondent, John Gizzi, always attired in his fedora as he comes to us tonight from Newsmax, Washington, in a lovely scene that has him almost in front of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, that's important. Obviously, a lot of attention there. But, John, you want to take a look down ballot at some key Senate races uh, because Republican control of the Senate hangs in the balance tonight. Let's begin in the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. My old congressional colleague, now Senator Pat Toomey, running against Democrat Katie McGinty. What do you think will happen in the Keystone State tonight, John? Toomey will pull off a reelection that will be a nail biter in itself. And as Harry Truman used to say, it's one for the books. This is the most expensive Senate race in history, with an aggregate total of $140 million being spent on behalf or against Toomey and McGinty. But given the fact that so many never-Trumpers are doing penance by working for Senator Toomey and that so many Trump supporters hold nothing against him for refusing to endorse their candidate because he's never attacked him, I say that he wins a squeaker. Well, let's bring in someone else who uh, has opinions of all these things. My colleague, Steve Malsberg, who hosts the Steve Malsberg Show weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern on those nights when we're not covering the elections. Steve Malsberg, we're taking a look at Pennsylvania. Brother Gizzy thinks that uh, uh, that my old pal is going to prevail, uh, the Republican there, Brother Pat. But, you know, it's interesting when you take a look at Toomey's situation, about 18 months to two years ago, he reached out to do like a Second Amendment, uh, I don't want to say softening, but I guess that's what it was. He teamed up with uh, the former governor of West Virginia, uh, now the senator there, uh, to, suburb, to a appeal, I guess, to suburban housewives. It's kind of dangerous for Republicans on the Second Amendment, but will that prove effective tonight for those suburban housewives in the areas around Pennsylvania and make the difference for Pat Toomey? Well, I mean, uh, that, that's, it's hard to say, and it's hard to say uh, will it come down to, to that one issue or not. And, uh, you know, I, I, I put my money uh, on John's uh, uh, fedora any time <laughs> and the head that's under it. And I, I, I think, you know, obviously Pennsylvania, I, I wonder what John would say uh, to, the, to the question, John, if you believe that Pat Toomey will eke it out in one for the ages in a nail biter all the way down, uh, will that be consistent with the results we'll see from the top of the ticket, the presidential results as well? I'm not sure, Steve, because the top of the ticket uh, is different from the Senate race in one key way. There are many people who 
join the legion of never Trumpers. And I'm thinking of one lady in particular from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, a former county chairman. She will never vote for Trump, and yet she will walk precincts, make phone calls, and raise money for Pat Toomey. So in a state that's been trending towards straight ticket voting in the last few years, you're going to see an awful lot of split tickets out there. One postscript on the gun measure. What Toomey proposed with Senator Manchin of West Virginia was nothing different than the law that Pennsylvania gun owners have to live by within the Keystone State. Now, it didn't pass, and I watched him defend it for an hour at a meeting in Harrisburg among some rabid gun owners. And then he said, it didn't pass, so let's talk about things we agree on, and got a standing ovation. That issue seems to be behind the senator. Well, we will keep our eye on Pennsylvania and some of these other races. Brother Gizzy, we appreciate your time. We'll check back, uh, obviously, on these stories. And as Brother, uh, as Brother Malsberg put it, that magnificent mind nestled underneath that fedora. John, we appreciate your time <laughs> from Newsmax Washington. Another great mind, a guy who was bearded when I first met him on Capitol Hill, uh, the former chairman of the Intelligence Committee, Pete Hoekstra from Holland, Michigan, now all clean-shaven and uh, maybe a few years more mature, and but as wise as he's always been. Pete, thanks for coming back in. There's something else we need to address tonight, and it, it, it's something that was talked about over the weekend and something we heard threats about, and that was terrorism and attacks on voters. Now, I don't want to be whistling past the graveyard because there's still voting going on in most of our states right now, but this whole notion that we... we could see domestic terrorism on polling places today. Pete, what were you hearing about that? And is that a threat we can discount at this hour? Well, you can't discount it until the polls are actually closed. <clears throat> I think there's actually some reports now coming out of California with a shooter uh, in California. We don't know any specifics about that. That may or may not be related to terrorism. But we know that, you know, Al-Qaeda and radical jihadists have always targeted these kinds of critical event dates here in the United States. Uh, and, you know, other than uh, the 9-11, they really have not been successful. And, you know, uh, you know, so it's something we just need to be thankful for. And we need to recognize that these joint terrorism task forces, the CIA, the FBI, our intelligence community, uh, they're, they're really good at protecting us here from these threats that are coming from abroad, Homegrown uh, jihadist, it's a little bit more difficult, but, you know, hey, we've done a very, very good job, by and large, of keeping America safe. Well, let me talk about something that I promised to bring to everybody's attention as it continues to change and seesaw back and forth, and that would be the results coming out of the sunshine state of Florida. Uh, now in excess of 1% of the precincts reporting, Donald Trump 50%. Hillary Clinton, 47 uh, percent. Steve Malzberg, it is as if these two candidates are on a seesaw, at least in terms of election returns in the Sunshine State. Uh, what do you expect tonight out of Florida, Steve? I mean, I would be very, very surprised if, uh, if Donald Trump didn't win. I mean, it, it, the, the Cuban community, the fact that he has his roots there as well, it's a second home to him. Um, and I, I, I just think that... Uh, and again, if, if Donald doesn't win Florida, then this is over. This, is, this whole night is going to be a very quick night. And uh, the road uh, map for him is just uh, uh, virtually impossible. So uh, it's, it's, it's more important for Donald Trump than it is for Hillary Clinton. And uh, I, again, I'd be surprised if he didn't win it. Again, split ballot. I think Marco Rubio is going to comfortably win his Senate seat. Uh, I think our early results are showing that he is ahead there. Uh, and I, again, if, they, if the ballot is appearing to be split, as it might eventually be in Pennsylvania, um, then there's a reason for that, probably. And maybe uh, at the very end of this, if it doesn't work out for Donald Trump, uh, he has to look himself in the mirror. And we have to look at the media. We have to look at the Republican Party. I'm not throwing in the towel well, yeah, yet, well, As but, I was going to uh, say, we've got a, little, got a little more time tonight, Steve. And before we yeah, let him go, let's Florida let... Florida should go down... Yep. Florida should go down. And of course, as you indicated, not all the polls are closed yet in Florida. Uh, we still have about a half an hour in some sections. Yeah, over in the west uh, part, up uh, around Pensacola, you got about another uh, uh, half an hour to vote. Uh, Pete, we've got about 30 seconds. Your take on Florida, because after all, for purposes of full disclosure, you spend quite a bit of time in the Sunshine State. 
Uh, I do. One of my friends is actually uh, has a place down in Bonita Springs. A lot of West Michigan people down in Bonita Springs, the Naples area. They say that area is all Donald Trump. Uh, you know, who, it's a big state, but, uh, you know, I think it'll be a nail biter. But uh, I agree with Steve. I think Trump pulls it out at the end. Well, that makes three of us. So uh, as we used to say in the House, by unanimous consent, we believe Donald Trump will win. Of course, the actual vote far from <laughs> unanimous, and we will continue to monitor it. Pete Hoekstra tonight from Holland, Michigan. Pete, thanks. We'll see you later in our coverage. Steve, of course, we want you to stay right where you are. As we uh, think about this, Donald Trump leads in one of the most accurate polls around. Will that translate to a win tonight? Pollster John Zogby joins us next here on America Votes 2016.